Hey guys, Joe Pye here. Welcome back to the shop. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope we all have a great 2017. I had the opportunity to make a part this morning out of a piece of material that I didn't have laying around and I used the technique that I think is pretty cool and maybe some of you know it and maybe some of you don't. But we're going to take a walk over to the mill and I'm going to show you how I made a thin piece out of a fat piece and it also gives me opportunity to use my new camera that Santa Claus brought me, aka my wife Colette. Thank you, sweetheart. I love it. I don't know how to use it yet, but I'll figure it out. All right, so let's take a walk over to the mill, and this should only take a couple minutes. Okay, guys, what I need to do this morning, I need to take this piece of material, and I need to chop it down to an eighth of an inch. If I were to hold it this way and mill it off, as it got thinner, it would start to crown, or it would start to cave in from the jaw pressure. So although that is an option with plastic, it's not a good idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize the face of the rear jaw as a backing plate. I am going to sit the part in the vise any number of ways that you care to do it. There's uh, a million different ways you can hold it. But I don't want my part to be higher than the top of the back jaw because as it cuts it will push away and you'll end up with a wedge shaped part. So thankfully this part is small enough that I can utilize the entire back jaw. I'm using an uncoated 7 16 two flute carbide end mill. I don't particularly care for carbide on plastic. I like high speed. I personally think it gives a much nicer finish. But if you have a real sharp cutter, chances are you're going to get a good finish anyway. I'm going to make sure that my cutter has got enough flute that it's going to engage the whole part and I do not want the bottom of the cutter to hit the parallel because that would not be a good thing. So I'll get it close enough and I'll call it a day. I'm going to be climb cutting because I want the cutting forces to drive the piece against the back jaw. zero out my digital. If you don't have a digital, zero out your dial. And at this point in time I'm going to take a measurement. And when you do something like this, I think a heavier cut is better than a light cut because a heavier cut naturally applies more pressure. And the more pressure you have, the more guarantee you have that it's going to be pressed up against the back jaw. So let's see what we have and what we'll shoot for. Okay, I am sitting on 249, which is absolutely beautiful. I'm looking for 125. I will take off... 126 more. 127 more. Could I go down to 120 and still be good?
Car measure is 121 at the top, 121 and change at the bottom, 121 and a half, 122. So plus or minus five ten thousandths of an inch. This part is flat. Actually, it is parallel within a thou. Uh, flat and parallel are not the same thing. I'll take it over to the bandsaw now, slice it off, and I have a nice piece of thin material. You can get pretty creative with this technique. Let me grab another piece and let's see how skinny we can actually get it. Digital readout is set at zero for 120 thick. So I'm going to take it down to 100, which means this resultant shim should be 20 thou thick. And basically, that's an impossible thing to mill any other way than what you're seeing right here. You can see the importance of keeping the part buried against the jaw. Nice sharp cutter, nice heavy cut. There you go. That is a nice thin piece. And we'll measure it up. We got 22 and a half, 23, 23. 23 at the top, 23. This is actually closer dimensionally than the eighth inch piece I just made. Nice clean surface finish. I hope you can see the reflection on that. I would be very pleased with that if that was my finished part. And just take it over to the saw, chop it off, and do with it as you please. Great little technique. Give it a shot. Well, that's a pretty cool technique. It does work very well. It works with brass, metal, plastics, whatever you want to stick in there. Make sure it's a climb cut. And don't be afraid to take a pretty healthy bite on that last pass. You need the extra pressure to keep the part against the jaw. If it's a big part, put an angle plate in there or put a backer block in it and uh, clamp it accordingly. Anyway, that's it. That's all I got for you. Until my next video, Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. Happy New Year, guys. I'm out.